Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And this one is pretty special because it's on this TVR Cerbera. And this is not any ordinary Cerbera if there is such a thing. This is the 4.5 Red Rose edition, the ultimate edition, 2001, this car dates from. Now, TVR Cerbera has been pretty close to my heart. I've, since it first appeared on a, a motor, motor show stand, Peter Wheeler took the covers off it. I was there when it was launched and I was really quite taken with this. Could I find reasons to own this car? Kids had arrived in 1995, it had two uh, rear seats. I was doing the man maths at the time and I thought, yeah, I could have a TVR uh, Cerbera. I actually went down the Maserati Ghibli route, um, slightly more sensible, you might say, but it's just the appeal of this crazy TVR, of this new engine, 4.2 litre at launch, and I was just getting involved in magazines and I've got this old performance car with the Cerbera on the cover, not to 100 miles an hour in nine seconds. And if I go right back to page 73, there was a third opinion from a certain Harry Metcalf. And I think that was my first appearance in print was this issue of performance car because John Barker invited me up as a potential buyer of this car to see what I thought of first driving this car. And we ended up to the Yorkshire Moors and it was quite eye-opening. From my Maserati Ghibli into this, pretty shocking. It was almost like a race car for the road. Then, so I didn't order one. It's funny in the article I say there was a long waiting list is the reason for not ordering it. It was a bit more than that. I just thought it was just too racy to use every day, but it, I was pretty smitten with the look of it and the whole appeal of TVR at the time. I then go to this issue of Evo magazine and in the top corner, we say England v Germany, because we did a crazy story in this one is December 2001. When I was talking to Brabus, they had a Mercedes sports coupe that they'd shoved a 6.1 litre V8 into it. And I thought it'd be quite fun to take a TVR server out. And that's what we did. So John, we put one in, John drove out to um, Germany and we did this crazy test in Germany against this Cerbera. It was great fun and the Brabus engineers really went to town, couldn't quite believe what they saw on this car. Anyway, let's go and have a closer look. Now, the first thing that strikes you about the design of the Cerber is just how low it is. I've just measured against the Espada. It's lower than the Espada. This was their 911 rival, but it came at a, a price half of what Porsche were charging for the 911 Turbo. This had 911 Turbo performance. This was 37,000 or thereabouts on the road at launch in 1996. And it seemed a bargain against the 94,000 pound Porsche 911 Turbo. And then it was just the shock factor, typical TVR. They'd done really well with the Griff and the um, Chimera. And then he wanted to do this engine. But what was key to the Cerbera, it introduced the AJP V8 engine, this in-house built engine, rather than relying on the Rover V8. And it was a lightweight unit, aluminium. We'll have a look at it in a moment. But it was a long stroke design because um, they were after torque. They didn't want to go for horsepower. They wanted horsepower as well, but they wanted that mid-range grunt. And it was a light engine, 125 kilos they claim, lightest V8 in production at the time. Single cam, two valve head to keep it super low was the idea, so keep this low bonnet line. And there's vast doors to give you access to the rear seats as well. Now, when it first came out, it had single headlights. And um, in 2001 as well, the Tuscan arrived from, T, um, from TVR, a different sort of model without the rear seats, but th they ha went for these sort of um, individual lights. They actually work really well. Um, John Barker found out when we took this one out to Brabus, they were excellent lights. When we open the bonnet, you'll see how far back the engine is in the engine bay. It really is a front mid engine car and a lightweight engine. You've gone up to 18 inch wheels now on the 4.5 red rose. Wonderful brakes. When we take it out on the road, I can't get over the brakes. And this car, I know the owner of this car and he has looked after this without thought of budget. He has a 911 sit, sat behind, 993, 911 and, and then the Cerbera. And there are his yin and yang cars, the Porsche, sensible, you know what you're going to get, great car, um, unmodified. This one, wild TVR, 
and he just has enjoyed it. This is 55,000 miles it's done. This has lapped Europe many times and he's, and he's done fantastic things to it. Everything you'd want to do. This is a unique colour, um, Jamaica blue it's called the engine has top end has been had a little bit of rebuild but he's added a electric water pump um, oil temperature sensors additional oil coolers that sort of thing but he has also done the suspension and i when i ride it it is super stiff riding the spring rates on this car now are 450 front and 375 rear all the suspension rebuilt but oh it's firm out on the road but it looks ace Actually, I'll just show the interior, this, um, how this works. You might remember, this is a, you open it with a little button under the, um, under the mirror there. There's the interior, crazy dash. And then you meant to clamber into the rear seats. When I was looking to buy one, somehow I persuaded Peter Wheeler to get in the back to prove that it, you could actually sit in the back of the car. It was quite funny once he'd got in i said oh do you want a hand get it out he said no no i'm going to stay here a while and i saw i left the uh, motor show stand and then i saw two people dragging him out because he's about six foot five quite a lot of peter wheeler to fold into the back seat but he did prove you can sit in the back of this car but really it's more for smaller adults or kids or something like that come around the back the owner of this car two kids and he actually had child seats made up trimmed in the perfect leather to match the interior and him and his wife and kids have been everywhere in this car while he's owned it for quite a number of years looks to me very like the Camera at the back very distinctive tvr look now the engine right one one piece bonnet oh. this little thing fits in here can't get over how clean it looks under here, all body colour in this panel here. It sucks air right at the front, so cold air, but just look how far back that engine is in the chassis. There is the wheel line is there, it's right behind it. And this is the bit that Brabus just couldn't get over. When we lifted the bonnet for them, when we borrowed that car, that sports coupe, they couldn't get over this inlet manifold that was sort of squishy but it has wire inside. It's just a, I've never seen it on any other car. This is air conditioning pump here, but you can see a single cam um, rocker cover here, here and here. So that's the V8. It's not dry sumped, oil is checked down there, but it's just how clean, how lovely it is to see a car with no wires, no nothing. This this glorious V8 sat there. Battery sits the other side. Great bit of design really. Right, I'm gonna put this down. And let's take it outside, take it for a drive. Already it feels different clambering into the TVR than any other car. First thing you ought to know about Cerberus is they have very long doors. You can almost, if you're slightly below average height, then kids can just get straight in the back in your seating position but uh, yeah i'm sort of in between i'm not as tall as peter was so this car can accommodate very tall people but it doesn't open very far and when you're parked next to another car you just have to be aware that you need all of that to clamber out just because of the length of the door and then you're met with um yeah tvr-ness at its at its best we just hadn't ever seen an interior like this apart from tvr Mr. Swoopy, they used to call him, the designer of interiors of TVRs of this period. But yeah, a, a strange two-spoke wheel. This is does move um, the wheel, well it moves quite a lot, but you can adjust it, go up and down. And you have instruments, not only in the dash, but in the lower part of the wheel as well. And a very Peter Wheeler-esque thing, a actual vent that blows cool air at you straight at you that was something that he sort of insisted it on um, to open the door is a press button as well and that's how you do it i just noticed the build quality just the seal they put a join right where you see it which other manufacturers probably wouldn't do um, it doesn't take very long to discuss the interior of this car because there isn't the normal thing touchscreen set Apart from, well, I suppose there is a touchscreen because the his owner of this car, software wizard, and he actually made this. Um, this phone sits here, and I've got revs, and I've got water temperature, and all sorts of amber probe, oil throttle position, etc. On there to start it, that's unusual as well. You press a button in the wheel. I then blip. 
the immobiliser and uh, you don't know where I'm doing, but I have a hidden button that you, I'm not going to show you where it is, and that brings everything to life. Um, and there's already the shatter of that race derived V8 up the front, which actually sounds like a, a four cylinder engine. Basically, it's a flat plane crank. And what that means is you have a bank of um, two sets of four. As, as the piston number at the front of the V is going up and goes pop, the one on the other side is going pop at the same time. So it sounds sort of like a four cylinder, even though there's two cylinders firing at the time, rather than a rumbly V8 with eight power strokes sort of throughout of the rotation of the crank. It's different with a flat plane crank. Conventional handbrake as well. I've met with 97 and 95 button to access the Red Rose engine map for the extra horsepower. These fans, you sort of touch them and then twiddle with them like this. That's heater and air conditioning down here. Air conditioning was an extra in this day. In fact, when the Cerbera was launched, even power steering was an extra. But um, yeah, two turns locked to lock. So yeah, and then oh, trying to find the seat belt is always a game. Again, it's the length of the doors. Strap ourselves in. It's all quite tight in here with a tunnel and everything, but. Oh, that, it wouldn't be a TVR about all that. And away we go. Quite a, um, quite, it's got a new clutch in it, but it's, yeah, it's a very racy clutch. I presume it's a twin clutch because they, they want to produce you know, sort of minimal amount of flywheel, uh, make it lighter. And one way of doing it is to reduce the diameter. So anyway, gonna head out and onto some better roads. So you'll be joining me in a moment. little indicator down there. Interesting noise, no other dials. Yeah. I'm just using five and a half thousand RPM. Yeah, and 60 arrives really quite quickly. Funny enough, when I first drove it, I thought, well, this is really quite refined. There isn't this dominant sort of tire noise that you get in modern cars. This is my noisy bit of road, I have measured it. So I thought, oh, it might give a low reading. No, it gave 80, 81 decibels along here. But because it's mechanical and different sort of sounds, I, on a long run, I've had this car for a couple of weeks. And it's actually more refined than you expect, weirdly, even though the decibel reading is quite high. It's just the environment, the sort of, it's a sort of pillar box to look out of, it's all enclosed. I actually feel the tunnel is very um, enclosed. I haven't got a, a clutch foot rest to the left of the pedal. It's straight against the tunnel in this car. Gear change just falls to hand. I'm really quite comfy and I've, there's a lot of space. If I wanted to rest my clutch foot, the tunnel is enormous because of, I think TVR, everything had to be made Peter Wheeler size. So everything can accommodate a six foot five sort of plus size human. Really odd the engine, this sort of race derived engine, everybody expects it to be, have a wild side. It's pretty docile at low speeds. It has no issues whatsoever. And that's what made the Rover V8 such a good engine really for TBRs. As I often say in my videos, you do spend a lot of time going slowly. What the HAP engine offered was way more horsepower at the top. It gave more power the more revs you fed it. I'm hesitating on it loves to rev because actually peak power is at 6,000 RPM. It's not a one that revs to seven or eight. It's all done and dusted by about six and a half or uh, thereabouts. So sort of its reputation, is, it, it sort of precedes what it actually does. You know, you say race engine, you expect high revs. That's not so with AJP. It does its best work from four to six really, but it does mighty work in that small band. The other thing that needs a special mention, seats. They're not what you expect either. They're really quite soft and comfortable on long journeys. Not what you're expecting at all. Um, they don't have a lot of sort of um, support at the shoulder level, but they've got bolsters here. And you're, but because you're so enclosed, you can't move about. Comfy on a long 
long journey. But yeah, if you're on a track day or something, yeah, it would be worth putting better seats in. But um, there's other things to worry about were you to take this car on track. I like the cubby hole down here, always a useful space. And it's just bizarre looking around how much space there is. It is very 911 like in the way you have the you know the occasional rear seats and just places to put coats and bags and stuff. And there's an enormous boot if it wasn't full of baby seats and child seats, there's a lot of space back there as well. Right, I'm coming out of here, I've got 3,000 on the dial, I'm in second, here we go. Concentrates the mind. Cerbera. When you're going for the red line, is quite a thing. Yeah, it's one of those cars. It's so fast the steering. It's two turns, lock to lock. You want two hands on the wheel. You go down, change gear, wheel, hand back. So unlike a modern car. Let's bring the speed down so you can hear me. Yeah, the horsepower in this car is well. TBR claimed 440 horsepower with the Red Rose kit, 420 for the standard 4.5 Cerbera. Not really, they didn't really do that numbers. They've always been quite inventive with their horsepower numbers at TBR, and I think the press cars were enhanced, shall we say. If you have a TBR Tuscan race series using the same AJP engine, I have a suspicion those first Cerberas we got um, were actually a from the Tuscan race car rather than the regular customer version. Anyway, this car has been rolling roaded and it's putting out 414 horsepower of the crank, which is ample in a 1275 kilo car. We weighed a 4.5 Cerber actually at Brabus and that's what it was with a full tank of fuel. So that's still a light car with full, full of fuel. But uh, let's see how it gets on down here. Quick revs, you can hear it then just him in tow in and you revs can go up in an instant and then oh dear. It is quite stiff. this bit of road because it's one of the roughest bits of road I know and if the car's got suspension issues it's shown up here this car the spring brakes are just too high for this bit of road but it's not moving around on the cameras we move about it's had a few full geo so I can tell that it's not tram lining in the sort of ripples in this road but it's given me a bit of a workout and weirdly quiet there's no sort of wind noise it's just a little or something but uh, it just feels a car with quite long legs and it wants to do distance it's it's a mix of emotions you get with this car it's just not stereotypical of what you expect the server to be although I'm probably blessed in the fact that it's um, dry out rather than wet I love how I look out the back window I can see this server and this three-headed dog on the rear parcel shelf let's try it through here Here's the compression, as expected, it jumps me out of the seat, but didn't bottom out and then around there. Basically my traction control is a 10 inch accelerator travel. You're going through the best and I'll probably oh, oh. Sorry if I went a bit quiet there, but um, when pushing a Cerbera uh, and speaking at the same time, it's not something is easy to do. And it's all the better. That's what I want a server to be like, so I don't have any issues with it at all. It went through there pretty well, but you have to have your wits. It's trying to read the information. It's fast steering, but the amount of information isn't high for some reason. It doesn't really shake around and give you feedback, but it's uber quick. Um, lock so if you just sense anything sort of going wayward at the rear you've got very quick steering to correct it with. We weren't near the limits there though. It's funny the tyres on this are quite narrow. I think the 235 at the front, um, 245 at the back, 255, I'll flash it up now. So they're not big section tyres as we're used to today. 
which is fine because you haven't got that bollock of sort of turbo torque you're having to deal with and it's a light car it doesn't need this excessive rubber on the road apart from actually traction getting away from the line if you really give it the full beats now I've just dropped the side window just so you can hear more of what's happening outside it makes a glorious noise this car it's an age of before particulate filters and that sort of thing brakes are immense in this car solid pedal perfect pedal to heel and toe from as well try it around here Replacement, but I am going to say it's that very special car in the garage that you want to go out and take out to scare yourself every now and then, should you wish to. But it can also you can take it out for an evening, come home at night, and have a quiet ride home. And as the owner did on this car, take it all over Europe. It's all got air conditioning, all the rest of it. So there you go. Hope that's given you an insight into this very famous TVR. If you have enjoyed this video, please keep watching, keep subscribing, more videos coming along very soon.